Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kamal Johnson. I'm the mayor here at the city of Hudson and um, welcome everyone viewing in to our second virtual town hall. I wanted to put these on to get information and resources directly to our constituents. And I believe that it's extremely important for our constituents to see all the local leaders on each level on the same page. Um, I do have some updates from our last town hall. And I spoke to the governor's office this morning and um, you know, I explained to him some of the issues that are Hudson specific and um, Columbia County specific, as well as um, you know, some of the short uh, falls that we will start to encounter regarding our economy and um, you know, our city budgets. Um, here in the city of Hudson right now, we are you know, it's not a sense of panic, but we are going to start asking each department to look for um, what they can cut uh, from each of their budgets within five to 10%. Um, the governor's office informed me that they are pushing the feds to uh, provide funding for local governments on the county and city level. Uh, I spoke to Senator Gillibrand uh, about 20 minutes ago and she informed me that they just put out a bill that should help um, you know, direct funds to local and county governments as well. So she has been extremely helpful during this process and um, you know, a great partner. She also informed me that they just put out a bill that will add more money for businesses um, in smaller rural communities like Hudson. Uh, part of the last bill uh, kind of isolated Hudson a little bit since it dealt with larger banks and these will deal with um, credit unions and uh, smaller local banks as well. So that $60 billion bill will be more money for rural communities, minority owned businesses, women owned businesses, and um, the latter. So all the things that affect our city here in Hudson. So with that said, I want to open up the panel we have a new uh, panelist today. We actually added some women leaders <laughs> into the panel. It was uh, a bunch of us men last time. So um, we are honored to have with us here um, our assembly member, uh, Didi Barrett. Thank you, Kamal. And uh, thank all of you, uh, my, my colleagues and on the panel, but also all of you out there who I know in many different ways are, uh, are, are pulling this community forward and uh, doing the kind of work that um, will make us come, come out of this stronger and more together. Um, and it has not been easy. And the focus, particularly on healthcare workers, you know, we cannot thank enough the first responders for the work that they've been doing across the state. And I think we can be very proud of our state. Uh, we really have been leaders. We've been hit the hardest of anywhere, but um, the work that we're doing and the, the, the fact that um, people keep looking to us um, for our leadership is, you know, is really important. In my office, we have um, been fielding scores and scores of phone calls on a regular basis, um, largely from constituents, but really across the whole Hudson Valley um, because my office has been, and I really want to thank my team so much for being um, so engaged and, and so responsive with um, understanding the unemployment issues and the, um, the, the small business challenges and, um, and really getting answers for people right away. I mean, we, you know, we, we um, have, you know, have really turned over every stone possible and, and uh, with the Department of Labor have worked very hard to make sure that they start addressing uh, the challenges that many of our uh, workforce is finding and not being able to get response and not getting calls back and they've been changing the policies on you know on a regular basis it is the numbers are just mind-boggling when you look at what the department of labor is used to doing compared to the kinds of the numbers of applications now and um, even after you know in, throughout the whole of the you know of the great recession uh, the numbers that they're getting daily didn't begin to compare um, now what they're seeing to, you know, to that era. So um, trying to, uh, to be a little patient, but we really have, um, you know, have kind of a, a daily uh, contact with, with the leadership at DOL and, and helping us uh, get answers to all of our constituents. Also been working very hard on um, working with small businesses and actually just today 
uh, a, an effort that I helped launch uh, with Berkshire Taconic Community Foundation and uh, Columbia Economic Development announced the, the first round of grants. It was about uh, $200,000 that we were able to raise. And um, just for all of you out there, we're still raising it so we can continue to uh, give these small continuity grants to the, the small uh, businesses in our area, because I think many of them will not in the end find um, that the SBA is the answer to their prayers. Uh, that's a complicated process. It's a you know, long time process. And for many of our small uh, businesses here in Columbia County, it really is, it's a thousand dollars or $5,000 that makes a difference. And, um, and that's what these grants are all about. So uh, that first round was released today also with Columbia uh, also with uh, Berkshire Taconic, uh, we launched a uh, emergency fund, which works with our not-for-profits and that um, uh, announced uh, grantees last week, which were, you know, many of our Hudson Valley, uh, our, our Hudson and uh, regional not-for-profits in Columbia County uh, were the beneficiaries of that as well. And um, I also want to share that I was just got off to a conference call uh, with my colleagues in the assembly and the speaker shared with us that an additional $25 million um, has been put into the food banks and the, uh, the food pantries funding. Uh, so anybody in working in that area should know that that money will be available in the next couple of days. And our, uh, our, our local uh, regional food bank is, uh, you know, is basically the recipient. And then as it fills, filters down to our smaller uh, and, and more local food pantries and food banks, um, that should, should become accessible very, very uh, quickly as a result of, of that uh, new boost in funding. So those are some of the things that we've been working on. Um, I continue to offer my office and my team and myself for uh, anything that we can do to help on, um, on unemployment issues and small business issues as well as anything else. I mean, we, you know, we really have had a range of, of, of different topics that we're dealing with regularly. And in the two counties that I represent, um, you know, there's differences, but, you know, but a lot of similarities. And, you know, and Hudson is uniquely the one city that I represent has had its, you know, it, it particular shares. And I know uh, when we look to reopening, we're, you know, we've had conversations with um, the Hudson Development Corps and others about the best way to do that. But, um, I think that you know that that uh, this communication and you know the leadership that you're all providing will put us in a really good place to to move forward and uh, build on all the wonderful things that are part of this community and have been and will be going forward as well. So thanks, Kamal. Thank you, Assembly Member. Um, you know this issue is something that you know the moniker that we created, "All Hands on Deck," is going to take all of us, and that's why I've been in touch with our uh, elected officials on every level. Um, but one thing that I felt like was left out of the last um, virtual town hall was our school district. And um, I know I do have a deep empathy for um, our school seniors right now who it's like their, their last year has kind of been erased, it feels like. So I wanted to um, you know, introduce to the panel, uh, Dr. Maria Suttmeyer, who is the superintendent of the Hudson City School District. I would also ask that uh, anyone who isn't speaking to please uh, mute your microphone until you are speaking. So Dr. Sutton. Thank you, Kamal. Um, I just wanna also start with thanking our entire community, our first responders, our healthcare workers, people who are essential workers, Department of Health. This community has come together and rallied like I've never seen before, you know, the school districts had very little notice that we were closing our doors. I literally was told on Saturday, March 14th, and we met on Monday, um, March 16th, to figure out a plan for how we were going to meet the executive order of the continuity of learning, uh, distributing meals, and providing childcare for first responders and healthcare workers, as well as other essential staff. So, um, we were able to do it. We have been working tirelessly. It's been quite incredible um, to have a new platform launched with less than 48 hours notice was something I have never experienced at all in my almost 30 years in education. 
but to see what we have been able to accomplish as a team, I'm very, very proud of everyone in our school district, our administrators, our teachers, our support staff. Um, and I have to recognize, you know, the internal heroes that we have, our cafeteria staff have not skipped a beat. They are preparing meals every single day, making sure our families have breakfast and lunch Monday through Friday and also weekend meals. We've served well over 25,000 meals now since we closed our doors on Mar March 18th. And in concert with that, we have the regional food bank and people helping with additional groceries for uh, families that are most in need. So um, we have given out devices. We were very fortunate to have a one-to-one -one high school plus also um, many computers on carts and other devices, um, Chromebooks that we were able to put into the hands of our students to keep online learning going. We've been giving out um, hotspots as well for anyone that does not have Wi-Fi access so that they have access to all of the learning activities that are happening. And I know that um, Kamal through um, an associate of his, I believe Sparks of Hudson, has helped us also with, with Wi-Fi. So it literally has been hands all hands on deck with everybody pulling um, us forward and helping us to make sure that students are engaging. We are very concerned, you know, we're doing all we can from this type of platform to continue the academic, but also the social emotional development of our students to not have them meeting with counselors and making sure that we are meeting all of their needs. It's been um, quite challenging. And we're concerned about when we have to come back to school, which we're hoping um, can be as soon as possible, what that is going to look like. We know that students are going to need to have um, additional academic supports, but we also don't know what the social distancing will look like and how that really um, plays out in a, in a school district from busing students to school to all of our common areas and our classrooms. And you know, when you think about um, potential additional um, financial um, reductions compared to what we've already been reduced to um, currently with the state aid runs that came out. Um, we're trying to wrap our heads around what classroom sizes would look like if there were reductions in staff and class sizes go up, but yet we're being asked to um, provide social distancing for students. So it's a real dilemma. There's a new challenge every single day um, that we're grappling with and trying to figure out how to mitigate what will look like when we come back. Um, child care has been going well. We're servicing um, quite a few families right now and that could see an uptick as people are, are needing to re return to work more and more. Thank you, Dr. Suttmeyer. Um, I wanna transition over to our Common Council President, uh, Thomas DiPietro, who has some updates as well. Hello, Hudson, and thanks for joining this uh, second virtual town hall. Thanks to Mayor Johnson and Randall Martin for arranging it, and welcome to all our new panelists. As difficult as these times are, the city continue, continues to operate effectively and the city council, though working remotely and meeting virtually, is looking towards our future. Some think we should focus entirely on the crisis and others believe we need to be more aware of the big picture. To critics, I can only say damned if you do, damned if you don't. In this regard, we have a major project on the table, a proposal for affordable housing on North 7th Street. Some worry that this is proceeding too fast and or without enough public input, <clears throat> excuse me. With those thoughts in mind, the city will post a comprehensive guide to the project early next Monday. That page will also invite the public to ask questions and it will invite comments as well. It's important that we address perennial issues in Hudson as much as we deal with the urgent ones. And by that, that I mean, of course, the most urgent one, the coronavirus pandemic. It is the council's job, most of all, to keep an eye on the bottom line during the crisis, which isn't easy since we know uh, what the we can't easily know what the effects of the economic turndown will mean for us here in Hudson. After after all, the govern governor is, is in as much of a quandary as we are. There are two other things I'd like to call your attention to. First of all, our youth center continues to provide food deliveries to those most in need. 
As of yesterday, they now serve upwards of 600 people. And none of that food, by the way, comes from your local tax dollars, but from numerous charitable sources, as well as from the states, uh, as Assemblyman Barrett uh, listed. One of those sources, though, is the Friends of Hudson Youth. So if you can afford it, please donate. And these were so popular last time, using them again. Friends of Hudson Youth, or HudsonYouth.org, that's where you can donate. Finally, I know many have wondered when and how we might make use of the Tourism Board's Fund of Lodging Tax Revenue to address the current crisis. I'm happy to say that since their meeting last week, they have been working tirelessly on developing an application process for distributing funds, both to short-term and long-term projects that meet the legal guidelines. With council approval, we could be putting checks in a few weeks. That's good news. And let me remind you once again, go to the city of Hudson COVID-19 page. It will answer many of your pressing questions with, link, with links to other answers you need as well. Your individual council members wanna help you in any way they can. Connect them. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks. Thanks, Kamal. Thank you, uh, Tom. Um, and next, I want to transfer over to um, our chief, uh, who uh, you were requested on demand. <laughs> so uh, welcome to the panel, if you want to give an update to the people from our law enforcement side. Thank you very much, Mayor. I'm grateful for this for forum. Um, there's some points that I jotted down that I want the citizens of our city to know and be reassured. First of all, the epidemic has not reduced our police patrols, our response time, or impacted public safety in terms of law enforcement. Uh, the department has been spared of any loss of uh, manpower due to the virus. We've taken measures to protect our officers and the public by isolating our interview area, setting up a decontamination tent, and issuing strict orders regarding exposure risks. The police union proposed and I agreed to implement a 12 hour schedule for our officers that we started last month. The schedule ensures that if we lose a platoon of officers due to sickness, uh, we will have a replacement shift uh, to take all over in the event of a quarantine. Um, our streets appear to be quiet but we've only seen about a 15% reduction in our calls for service. Our arrests, however, are down uh, more than 30%. Trou uh, troubling is that domestic disputes are up about 10% uh, in comparison to last year. Uh, in response to that, we've been in contact with Columbia Green Domestic Violence. Uh, there are colleagues over there, and we've obtained a lot of informational um, uh, pamphlets, material, posters to share with our victims, and we've posted uh, on social media contact information, and we believe we have reached victims. Um, I'm in regular contact daily with our county officials and county emergency coordinators. The mayor routinely checks the status of the police department and has worked with us to ensure our readiness and ability to protect our citizens. We're thankful for the support of our city leaders. I am satisfied, I'd like to uh, communicate to you that I'm satisfied that we can continue to provide 100% police services and that and public safety when it comes to law enforcement will not be compromised by this virus. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Um, on the line, uh, we also have one of the people I need to thank for getting these virtual town halls um, going and helping out with all the kind of back work that you know you have to do to put this together. So I want to introduce to the panel uh, Hudson Housing Authority Chairman Randall Martin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's great being on the panel. You know, I'm, I'm a little distracted by kind of running the meeting in the background, but thank you. I want to report that the Hudson Housing Authority is doing well. We have no confirmed cases. Um, we've been we've initiated an extraordinary effort to keep all of our common areas clean and provide all the services that our, our tenants need 
in terms of not being able to, to travel around, we've, we've initiated a lot of initiatives to make it easier for them to be able to kind of live their life and go on to do what they, what they need to do. And thank, thankfully, a lot of uh, community services, such as the Youth Center, have been involved in helping meet the needs of those who, who, um, who are unable to get out. And food has been brought to many of our residents. And, um, you know, we're still, we're still working through uh, social distancing issues. But in general, things are, are operating very well uh, at the Housing Authority. And um, as has been said prior, it, it's really extraordinary how the city has pulled together to really help in this time of, of emergency and crisis. And uh, we appreciate uh, everyone's help in this effort. Thank you, Randall. Um, now we're going to turn this over to the county. I guess we'll start with um, the Department of Health Director, Jack Mab. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess people want to start with the numbers. Um, as of today, 142 positives in Columbia County. Uh, we've tested um, 1,049 individuals over that time. We've tested, I say we've tested, but it's um, the hospital has been testing. People are tested in Albany. People are tested in Dutchess County, Ulster County. Uh, it's actually, we tallied it up at one point, some 30 dis different locations people are being tested from. Uh, we have 141 people under mandatory quarantine, which means we talk to them twice a day and take temperatures. In the city of Hudson, we have 20 individuals who are uh, have been positive at this point in time, scattered throughout the city, uh, pretty much geographically. Um, certainly one of the biggest issues that most people know about, we're, we're struggling with the outbreak at Fine Haven Nursing Home. We have 30, uh, 30 residents there who um, have uh, tested positive. We have nine individuals who have died as a result of the virus there. As of today, we have 13 staff who are also affected out there. Uh, it's, it's, really, um, it's really been a tough situation for that, for that location. Um, we um, are starting to get a little, uh, the state's starting to get a little looser with um, test kits. For the longest time, we couldn't get any. Uh, we got 100 uh, two weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago. We got 100 on this past Saturday, which is not a lot for us, but we're working in, in conjunction with Columbia Memorial, which gets a small measure of test kits as well. Um, we're, we're testing people that uh, we think meet the criteria. We're testing first responders. We're testing medical people as a, as a priority. Um, but we're also testing people who are, you know, again, clearly symptomatic and people that we want to, uh, that we want to see how, how they fare. So uh, I'd, I'd like to have more test, test kits in my back pocket. Uh, as you may have heard that uh, through the generosity of a number of, I think I'm stealing a little of uh, Chairman Rell Slender here. But through the generosity of a number of donors, we've ordered uh, 2,000 test kits. Uh, my understanding is that um, one of the ironies of this uh, of this outbreak is that it's a it's a small rural community. The uh, the the uh, test actual test strip is manufactured in Italy, of all places, where there's a huge outbreak, and uh, those those swabs are being held up in customs at this point. Uh, we hope to get them within the next week, and we are going to start doing community uh, testing. Thank you, Jack Mab. Um, I want to turn this over to the chairman of the county of supervisors, Matt Morrell. Matt, are you with us? All right. Um, I think we might be having some technical difficulties with uh, Matt. So I'm gonna open the floor up now to, um, you know, a range of questions. So um, I just ask everyone to go on mute until um, you're ready to answer a question. Um, so that means you, Chief. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> so uh, the first question, um, I would put it out there to, um, you know, Jack, you kind of talked a, a bit about this, um, but the first question is um, the governor keeps saying that testing is so key when, um, you know, it comes to getting to the bottom of this virus. Um, when will Columbia County be in a position to test everyone? And why is the plasma testing not being done in this community? Um, I'm sure there are other community members like me who want to know if they have been exposed to COVID-19 and if I would like to donate plasma to help and I would like to donate plasma to help others. 
a couple of questions there. Um, I, honestly, I don't think we'll ever get in a position where we'll be able to test everybody. Well, let me, let me, let me correct that. Um, I think that we'll, a year from now or eight months from now, we probably have enough kits to test the vast majority of people in the country. We may move on from that and not necessarily do it. Um, you may have heard that uh, the, uh, th of the 3,000 um, antibody test kits, uh, some of them were done in Catskill. The State uh, Department of Health is um, picking those sites and they, they, they don't tell us until, they, until like an hour before it happens because they don't want they don't want, they want people just to show up and they want it to be random. So it's people who are shopping uh, and just happen to be out and about. And that's, that's the way they're, it's not really a random test if you look at it from a, a strict a scientific way, but it's as random as it gets. Um, I suspect that as this as progresses, we will end up with one of our supermarkets in the county uh, getting, getting um, those tests uh, happening. It's again, it's gonna be totally random. Uh, last night, the FDA uh, commissioner indicated that uh, as of this point in time, uh, there are only four uh, antibody tests approved by that agency for use in the country. But uh, you know, as a testament to capitalism, there are 390 labs trying to get theirs approved. I think when, that's, when that opens up, I think we're gonna see a lot more testing happening across the, across the country. Um, as I indicated, uh, we're waiting for these, um, these uh, test kits to come. These are the swabs, these are the nasal swabs waiting for them, them to come. And we got a tentative date of early May that we want to do our first uh, clinic, our first drive through clinic. It will be by registration only. And we are going to, we have, we've already got the test kits, the, uh, the questions that we're going to ask. Um, you, we want people who are symptomatic or people who have been exposed directly to uh, somebody who is uh, uh, positive for this. Um, and we're going to do, we're, hopefully we're going to do a series of clinics. We are talking, um, and this should be of interest to people in the city of Hudson. We're talking about uh, because we recognize that some people don't have automobiles about doing uh, possibly doing a, um, a clinic at John L on the property. It seems like the biggest location that we might be used. I didn't talk to you about that, Maria. Sorry about that. We got to we got to do that. Um, but uh, we want to be responsive to that. It, it takes it, it take. There are going to be people who drive over. It does take a big area. Um, it's been it's been suggested that we do it in the downtown area. It may not be enough room to accommodate it. Um, but uh, we do want to do one in the city. Thank you, Jack. Um, I do want to also add that in the conversation I had with uh, Senator Gillibrand today, she did say that there's a bill passing through right now for $25 billion um, for testing, and uh, they want to have uh, rapid testing and drive-through testing in Columbia County, so she is fighting for that for our county. Um, I don't know if our assembly member wants to add anything on testing. Um, unmuting here. Uh, no, nothing particular. It's just you know, I, you know, I think that that um, as Jack said, the 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 random, which is you know fairly random, was is really trying to just kind of get a baseline of of of, of what is going on across the state, and you know, and obviously even the governor has acknowledged this is already people. Who are out? So you, you know, it's it's kind of a self-selected group, and uh, I think that you know that we have been lucky upstate and particularly in our county not to have the numbers that um, you know that many of my colleagues are seeing in their districts and their home districts. So um, you know, I, I feel like um, our a little bit of patience on our part um, is you know is one of the luxuries that we have right now um, to. Uh, to let the rest of the state address uh, what they have to in a more urgent uh, uh, way, and uh, you know, and, and and our time will definitely come, and everyone should just be, continue to wash their hands, and uh, and and stay safe. Thank you, Assembly Member. Um, the next question I got um, was from a constituent who said he filed for unemployment on March seventeenth. On the day of his scheduled call, after almost 50 attempts, um, he still has not um, had any contact with anyone from unemployment. He said he's called every day, sometimes 100 or more attempts. Is there anything from our local government, city, county, that you know we can do to kind of help the people in need that are trying to get through for unemployment? Matt, can I, I mean, uh, Kamal, can I answer that? Yes, uh, you can. So Matt and Gunnar in my office uh, have both been 
um, you know, daily talking with, uh, with DOL. And so um, this person should just reach out to my office, please, and we will intercept. I know there's a new, a new program that went into effect on April 20th. Um, that you know it, it is uh, is meant to be helping things, but uh, we we've been hearing from a lot of people. Initially, the problem was that they expected people to call back a second time. That that process was changed, and um, and and uh, DOL began calling people back. But the one thing people should not be doing is reapplying because once you're in the system, uh, there's no benefit to getting in there again. But please do reach out to my office, and uh, we will help. Uh, try to get a response as soon as possible. In my conversation with the governor's office earlier today, they informed me that they hired a ton of more workers who are currently being trained that the uh, website is also back online. So they said, you know, keep trying. And in the next, you know, week or so, they should have a ton of workers coming in to assist as well. Um, Senator Gillibrand also said to refer people to her office as well, and um, they can help. So, you know, reach out to our senator and our assembly member if you're still having trouble um, getting into unemployment. And, um, you know, feel free to keep my office posted on however, you know, we can help track this uh, progress. So the next question goes directly to um, Dr. Maria Suttmeyer. The governor is warning that there could be a 50% cut in state aid to schools. The city of Hudson is already seeing the negative impacts of COVID-19 crisis on its revenue from sales tax, lodging tax, even property tax payments. The number of initial claims for unemployment in Columbia County last week was 744 as compared with only 14 in the same week a year ago. In the midst of all this economic distress, the school district is getting ready to propose a budget for the next school year of 53 million, an increase of 3 million over the current year. How will the school district respond of there if there's a significant decrease in state aid? Um, okay, there's a lot in that question, so I'll, I'll try to go through it. Um, first of all, the governor did come out with um, a number of 50%. Um, I think it was last Friday, and then that changed the following week to 20%. Um, even 20% would be a devastating reduction in our revenue. Um, but I want to correct those numbers. Um, I don't know where the 53 million comes from, um, what the budget workshops have um, been going through is a budget of 52 million, 52 million, 132,420 dollars. And that's a difference of um, budget to budget of 2.3 million dollars, not 3 million. So it's closer to 52 and, and 2.3. Um, that is based on the revenue that we currently have now on the state aid runs that were provided to the school district. So that's how we're building our budget. But there's so much uncertainty right now as you know we're going through and we're explaining to the board what our potential um, revenues are and then taking a really um, close look at what our actual expenditures have been over the last three years. We do the best to um, balance that and make sure that we're not over budgeting and expenses and come out with exactly what we just did. If we are cut as much as 20%, then of course we need to go back and that's going to mean a reduction in staff, larger class sizes, anything that's not mandated we have to look at, such as sports. People don't like you know, to hear that, but that would be something that would be a, a big consideration because it's a big um, library for students in kindergarten through sixth grade is not a Mandram. And those are the areas where we would need to look first to see how much of the budget gap we needed to fill. And unfortunately, in such uncertain times and knowing that our students are going to need more of the support services that we were providing when our doors were open and we were coming to school every day, um, with that being an increased concern, but yet being faced with a financial, you know, um, crisis, um, 50%, we can't even wrap our heads around what school would look like. It's just, we cannot do it. We would not be able to do it. 
I've written letters to all of our um, county and state representatives, um, imploring them to please um, look into the federal funds that can help school districts. Of course, you know, I, I'm concerned about our small city school district, but I'm concerned about students across our entire state. Thank you, Dr. Setmeyer. Um, I did see our chairman of the county supervisors, Matt Morrell, um, was able to join us. So if you want to give your introduction and any updates um, for our constituents, uh, I want to give you your shot right now. Well, thank you, Mayor. I, I just wanted to apologize. Apparently, I'm te technologically challenged. It took me a while to, to get on here, but uh, I'm here. Um, I know J I, I did hear everything that was being said. I just couldn't get in but I did hear Jack uh, talking about the test kits, which I think are really important. And, you know, I will say that <clears throat> out of all this, I mean, we were able to get 200 test kits from the state, but we sort of took matters into our own hands uh, through donations that we received from a lot of generous people uh, to purchase 2000 test kits. So, and I won't get into the details, but I'm, I'm really proud of our constituency who have, uh, you know, stepped up to try to, to try to help uh, at least get people tested. So I think that that was a, a real positive. The other thing is, is, and I know you know about this mayor, we received 21,500 masks for the public. I think they were all distributed uh, the last couple of days uh, and it was done by population. So percentage of population. So the city of Hudson, I think fared fairly well uh, having the second largest population I think Kinderhook got the most uh, uh, face masks, but uh, I think it was a fair way of doing it, and it's it's meant specifically for the public. So um, we're I know in my town we're going to be setting up a day, uh, and we're going to advertise it where people can come, whether it's a firehouse or the town hall, uh, to pick up a, a free mask. Uh, so I think that's a positive thing. Um, you, a couple of weeks ago, we started the process of starting up a uh, a uh, moving forward business moving forward committee uh, to try to once uh, government starts opening up again and and the and the uh, economy starts opening up again uh, to try to help businesses uh, to transition to to uh, you know fully opening uh, and it may not be fully opening to begin with. But we're putting a committee together. Actually, Mayor, we're going to be asking you to serve as an advisor on the committee. Uh, and I, 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 we are, we're also mm -hmm. asking a school superintendent. Maria, I'm not sure who that is yet, but I know uh, I've asked Michael Tucker and Jeff Hunt to work on this project. Michael Tucker is our CEDC director, and Jeff Hunt is the Chamber of Commerce director. Uh, we're going to put anywhere from six to 10 business people on it. And as I said, uh, Mayor, we're going to ask you, uh, Holly Tanner, um, PJ Keeler, and uh, someone from the Emergency Management Office to be advisors to the group. Uh, so to give technical oversight. And we've asked Holly to be on it because DMV plays such a vital role in, uh, in the community. And, and uh, you know, a lot of businesses rely on, on DMV and the county clerk's office. So. Um, I mean, that's about it right now. I mean, a lot's been going on. Every day is a different day, as you know. Uh, and we wake up with a, with a new reality every day. Thank you, Chairman. I mean, I believe all of us on the, on the line can echo that feeling, you know. Um, I guess this one, I can open up for discussion with all of us, um, you know, on the panel because it affects all of us. And they said, um, right now, in our city and county, um, there's not a unified message around COVID-19 um, safety and the risk factors. Um, how can all of the people in the town hall kind of get together to create a uniform message for our constituents on, you know, safety? Um, some people may feel that, you know, there's mixed messaging, um, you know, we're telling people to stay home, but then we're telling them come out for food or different things like that. Um, so I don't know what kind of messaging or um, marketing comes from the county level as far as uh, getting the word out on um, a unified message around this issue. 
If I could, Mayor, we, I mean, we talk about it daily in the daily press release we put out <laughs> about people social distancing, uh, you know, just, you know, to keep, if they're in a crowd to wear a mask, uh, if, if they have to be in a crowd, but we'd like them to avoid crowds. Um, you know, obviously people need to shop for food. Uh, we just ask people to be careful, uh, wear a mask in the, in the supermarkets. I see now that the supermarkets have uh, arrows where you can only go one way up, up, up certain aisles. So uh, I, I would be respectful of that and be respectful of people's space. Um, you know, and we've been, we've been pushing that and, and that's why we've been trying to, uh, you know, provide as many face masks as possible. Thanks, thankfully, New York State uh, enabled us to get 21,500. But even before that, as you know, uh, we had some that we got from the health department, some used N95 face masks that we distributed to the, all the towns in the city of Hudson for their employees. So we're continually thinking about employee safety and public safety. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the next question is, uh, what is the county in New York State doing to ensure that we are testing vulnerable populations and doing outreach to people most at risk? I defer that one to Jack. Oh, thanks, Matt. Um, well, I think, again, uh, as I alluded earlier on, we have, we've, we've had access to pretty limited test kits. And, and when, we, when we take a look at our kits, and we do, we do give them to the hospital and the hospital does the swabbing and they're using their um, Galatia and Copic rapid care a lot. Uh, we, we're sending people who are, we, we see as vulnerable. We are sending people who have been ex exposed. We send people who have comorbidities. Um, I'm very proud of the way we, um, we work with Pine Haven. I mean, you can't talk about a much more vulnerable population than that. Um, and we got them test kits when they, they Dr. Dr. Romani, who's their medical director, asked for them. We got him kits at a time we didn't have them. We got them, uh, and we've been keep keeping him readily supplied. Um, Livingston Hills is the only other nursing home in the county that asked for kits, and we gave them to them. Um, we we have been in touch with every all the other nursing homes and saying we have kits. We will test. We will give you the kits, and we will we will transport them to Albany so you so you can find out what's going on. So I think we've been pretty aggressive about that, and I think in terms of taking advantage of the limited kits we have. Um, we, we do assess people for their vulnerabilities and they're the ones we want to get tested. Um, so, um, you know, I can tell you in the city of Hudson, we've had some senior citizens who are positive, who had uh, children and grandchildren living with them. Uh, we got people tested. We got, we got, out of the, got them out of the house and in different locations so that we try to break up that, that chain of exposure. Um, so I, I think we're, we're, I would love to have a lot more kits. I would, I would test everybody I could, but I think at this point, I think we're doing pretty well with that. And the hospital's priority with their kits is their, their own their healthcare workers and first responders. And I, I can tell you that a number of uh, rescue squad members have been tested because they had exposures. Thank you, Jack. Um, one of the things I wanted to add are, um, you know, some things the city are doing, um, and that's our youth center food distribution there's going to be flyers um, that were created by Peter Frank and Michael Comedis on tons of information that will go in each bag of food to go home to um, our citizens. Um, there's also a senior center outreach program where you can call to get information on services for our uh, seniors directly from our senior center. Uh, Chief, do you wanna give a brief uh, introduction to the uh, police department senior call-in program? Yeah, we have, um, Mayor, uh, we invite uh, elderly uh, and their families to uh, sign up for our call-in program. Uh, basically, we have a, they call in and check by a certain time, 10 o'clock every morning. If we haven't heard from our elderly residents, um, we will call back, try to contact them, or perhaps send a car to check on their well-being. Um, we have put it out on our social media. And we'll do that again to make it available. We had a favorable response. It's a program that we enjoy. It's very successful. So if folks are home, elderly folks are home, um, it's a way of checking in on them daily, uh, uh, anytime, even, even before we've had this uh, program for many, many years, it's very successful. So we'll put that information out on social media to remind people we still have that very valuable program. 
Thank you, Chief. Um, this next question is for Dr. Suttmeyer. Um, are there any plans or discussions around graduation? Yes, there are. You know, we're holding out hope. Um, don't know if we'll be back on Monday, May 18th. If we are, then, you know, that will be one plan. But, but we know that we have to have something ready if um, social distancing is, is going to be a part of our, our world and if we're not even able to bring people, you know, into a, a physical environment as one complete um, class body. We have about 125 graduates. So um, we've been talking um, with an indoor situation situation where we invite just a um, certain group from the 125 with limited family members that could come and watch them with pomp and circumstance and their caps and gowns come across the stage and collect a, a diploma without you know um, using all of the social distancing protocols that we can and then you know maybe the second part of that day we call in another group and then we would be willing to do it over the course of a week and have it videotaped and then pull it all together for one large um, showing that would either be on um, would be on our website, but also on local TV stations as well. We've kind of floated that by the students and parents, and that seems to be the number one um, solution that people are really supporting. Another idea is if the weather were to work with us, we could do it in larger groups on our uh, football field and uh, set up a way for our students to have graduation out out there and with social distancing and all of the, the protocols that we would have. We can definitely speak with Jack at DOH to make sure the protocols are acceptable. We've been talking to Lance Wheeler about helping us put together that um, video so that it can go on um, different stations and such as well. He usually video streams our graduations anyway, and um, so that will be a, a benefit to us as well. And any Thanks. ideas, anything anybody wants to do, um, you know, we have a little surprise coming out next week for our graduates to honor them. I don't want to give it away here, but, you know, we're really looking for a way to make this is a spectacular money. They were looking forward to so many things. Their um, class trip, their prom, their senior awards night, their graduation. So we're trying to combine senior awards with the graduation ceremony itself so that we can honor all of the students when they receive. Yep. You're cutting out on me, Maria. Um, You're, and you were totally frozen on my screen, so I couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> Did you hear it? Uh, you, what it I said? Got a, it got a little bit robotic at the end, but I think. Uh, was, sorry, everybody was robotic. <laughs> I thought it was just you. <laughs> so um, our next question, I can open up um, to the county and also um, to our council representative. Um, th are there any plans to freeze rents, um, especially in public housing? And our assembly member, if you want to also chime in on this as well. We haven't had those discussions, uh, Mayor. Uh, but I mean, we're the county really doesn't have a, a lot to do with public housing, um, at, you know, at this point. So. <laughs> That discussion ha hasn't been brought up, but I mean, if it were something that uh, we we could impact, we would definitely have a have a conversation about it. But uh, Kamal, the, there is guidance uh, in the governor's executive um, um, measures that uh, makes uh, I think there's a three month freeze where nobody can be evicted uh, in residence and mm -hmm. in, um, in uh, office space. And um, I don't know, I don't think we've, they've come to um, the place where they, you know, what, what will happen if people can't pay at that point yet, but, um, but at the moment that is in place and nobody can be evicted for, um, for that three month period. As far as Bliss Towers goes, I mean, most of the rent is regulated. So, uh, and it's income dependent. 
So I don't think that that's going to be, and, and if it's subsidized, none of that really changes. So we don't really foresee any of that changing. And as, and, and as uh, our assemblywoman mentioned, uh, there's a freeze anyway, but we, we work very closely with the tenants and we don't foresee um, any adverse rental uh, situations happening as a result of, of, of this time period. Thank you, everyone, uh, on that question. Um, you know, before we wrap up, I wanted to give a chance to the panel to um, be able to give out any information or resources or things that we may have uh, missed. So we can do this, you know, popcorn style if anybody wants to, you know, kind of just speak to the constituents while we have everyone's attention. I would like to just make sure that um, I know you have a good working relationship with uh, Senator Gillibrand, but I think that we really need to put pressure on our uh, federal representatives, our senators, as well as our, uh, our Congress members about supporting our local governments and our school districts um, and our communities. I mean, I, this is this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. And, you know, while I personally have been working real hard with for local uh, businesses and uh, my constituents, I feel like there's just a real disconnect from the federal government support. Um, and I think that we all at every level, as well as all of you out there, need to make sure that they understand. I mean, for for the, um, you know, the, the Senate majority leader to say that, you know, states should just go bankrupt uh, is just beyond belief. And we, you know, we are doing everything that we can at the state level. And I know you all are at the city and the county levels and you know we need we need our federal i mean they're the ones who can print money they're the ones who, mm -hmm. who can make that money available and uh so we really need them to to step up and support our communities in the way that we um um in, that we need right now so i encourage everyone to reach out to them and put pressure on them yeah i mean i would echo that and i wouldn't say i have a great relationship with our senator um where that relationship started is she called me the night of um, a, the uh, inauguration and said, you know, if there's anything you need to reach out. So ring, ring, here I am, um, you know, we're in the middle of a crisis. So I would definitely, you know, like to see our higher elected officials, you know, pushing for our city and our county. I agree. Anyone else want to give some closing remarks or? Yeah, Mayor, I, I would. I, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about our emergency management office is putting together a, uh, uh, what we're calling a, uh, let me find it here, um, a family assistance network. And it's, it's pulling together the human services agencies, both county and not-for-profits to try to help families who, who are in need uh, that would be mental health, uh, health, uh, you know, different, different not-for-profit agencies working in the community. So we, we're working on that. And also we've set up a hotline for our elderly and vulnerable populations. Uh, our Sheriff Bartlett has done that and uh, actually has uh, gotten, gotten quite a few calls where they've assisted uh, some of the vulnerable populations, um, you know, whether it's uh, transportation or it's uh, food or, or, or whatever. Um, so that seems to be working well too. So, you know, we're seeing needs as we go along and then we're trying to address the needs. Um, so it's like I said earlier, it's fluid, but um, you know, I think we're, we're, we're doing well, both the county and the city and in providing services to our, our populations. Thank you. One thing I would like to add, um, um, Mr. Mayor, is you know we we got some preliminary numbers out of the governor's um, pop up um, you know survey in the communities, and uh, you know at first you look at 13.6 percent, which is statewide, and it's a little a little daunting if you start thinking about the numbers in Columbia County, uh, and then you, you and then they start they they broke the data the data down a little bit, and we find out that it's 3.6 uh, percent up upstate, and one of the things that the governor said early on is let facts. Uh, drive your actions and not fear. I think you need to take a look at 3.6%. Uh, you know, and again, I think ours is higher because we're in the Hudson Valley. 
you know, with our, the num the three point six is averaged in with Herkimer County, which is very rural and whatever. But I, I think people just need to to stay calm and and hang tight and hang in there. Keep social distancing. Keep that mask on. Um, you know, keep keep stay at home. Stay the course. Um, and and you know, your patients will be rewarded. Hopefully, if you're you've had symptoms and you've been exposed to somebody who is positive in the coming weeks, when we get our chance to do our testing, uh, we are going to take registration online. For those um, those clinics, we also are going to have a number for people to call who don't have computers, uh, who, who just want to make a phone call to register. That will come out through the chairman's um, press releases that are daily, so the information is coming out all the time. And the minute I have those test kits in my hands, because I just don't trust things that that aren't in my hands yet, the minute I have them in my hands, we're going to put the the word out there. And we're going to we're going to get that first clinic going. All right, just make sure your hands are washed. <laughs> close, close on. Um, to our, our, our superintendent, um, if you can just give, um, you know, a little message on why it's important for uh, parents to have their youth logging on to uh, these Google Classrooms and everything, and um, the fact that this is not a vacation or a break, um, that education still matters. It matters very much. What they're doing now is going to help us so much to keep them engaged in their learning, to make sure that, you know, their needs are being met. We don't even know what summer school is going to look like, if there's going to be any programming that we're able to have other than a virtual one. So, you know, they need to engage now so that they understand the academic opportunities that are there for them. Anything that, you know, they have on their minds. This is a very uncertain time for children that don't always understand it. Um, I have to thank you, Mayor, for connecting with the school district in your morning announcements with Mr. McCormick. The students know there's a connection now between the school district and the city, and that's important. They know who their mayor is, and you know it's become kind of a fun back and forth during a time when it's very, very stressful. The teachers are working tirelessly to make sure that we are engaging students, and it is so important because there's going to be an academic, social, emotional gap, no doubt about it. When we come back together again, however that's going to be, we had gaps before and we've done a great job in this district of closing in those gaps and we've made so many improvements over the past few years, but I'm really concerned about the backslide and to be engaged now is going to help them so much more to know what the opportunities over the summer may be and when we come back together in the fall that they'll be in a much better place if they can continue to stay engaged. We also don't want to overload them with work. So we're trying to balance that and making sure that it's fun, it's creative, it's project-based. Um, they're using recyclables to make projects. And we had a little fun um, judging them yesterday, how much material they were using and such and, and what they came up with with their inventions. So, you know, just please, if you see a family, ask them if they're engaging with the school district, we're here for them. Watch our website for updates. We're all over Facebook and Twitter. Please stay connected to us and see the great things that are happening with our students. I think it's important for the adults to see what we're doing with them as well. And thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chief, your sign looks backwards. I can never tell. Is that better? You got to turn it around. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's inverted on my screen. That's cool. But anyway, listen, it's not all bad residents of Hudson. Everyone's doing a great job complying. We haven't written any tickets or arrested anybody for violating pause. The sheriff hasn't received. He's the uh, coordinator for pause complaints. The residents of Hudson are doing a superb job. Uh, very, very happy. Makes our job easy when uh, people listen to what we say and they take our recommendations. They're very, very positive. And then if I got that right, that's the hotline for domestic violence. And hopefully folks can read it. Not very good. And uh, thank you guys. Is that right, Chief? Yeah. That's it. Thank you. All right. Since you stole the page out of Tom's book, Tom, any closing remarks? Well, not a lot, but since <laughs> I brought this one back, this is the number to call me if you have any questions about the Galvin Project or what your city councilors or uh, council members are doing. Uh, anytime. All right, I want to leave us on uh, these words. Um, stay home as much as possible. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Um, if you must leave your home, wear a mask. 
If you must leave the house, use physical distancing. Um, I also want to address the elephant in the room, which is the housing project. Um, I want to state that I firmly believe in this project, but it is in the hands of the council to do their due diligence. Um, I envision a Hudson where we can not only attract people to visit and shop local, but also attract families to live and grow here. Families who have been displaced due to lack of housing and unaffordable housing need options and viable ones. This project is one option. I understand the concerns about the developer and the mistrust from those in the community. I cannot speak on their other properties. My relationship with the developer is only around this project, which the state is also a key partner in as well. I ask all of our elected officials, those in the state, county, and city, including myself, to look to do more, show more action, Polar plunges, Wi-Fi programs, food distribution, and other symbolic resolutions are great and feel good initiatives. But what are we really accomplishing if we are not progressing the lives of each other and our neighbors? So I wanna thank everyone on the panel uh, for their time and input. And um, you know, I look forward to doing one more of these to figure out you know, where we are as a city and county. So thank everybody for viewing and thank all of our panelists. Thank Stay you, safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor.